All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. And, uh, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. Um, someone was reminding me they've been listening to the talk, so they've heard all my material. I wanted to let you know that this is always an introductory meeting. Yeah, it's always the introductory offer, and that you are the product. Yeah. So in a sense, you come in with nothing, and if you leave with nothing, I've done a damn good job. Yeah? Because if you stop collecting so much something, which is going to turn into nothing anyway, and start at nothing, that may become everything for you, literally. And it's truly the gift that keeps on giving nothing. Yeah, Because there's no quantity to it. There's no end to it. So what comes into your life from that understanding doesn't... It never, never ends. It's always available at all times in an infinite amount. Yeah. So, for me, since you know, in the entertaining of it, it's sort of like what harkens it. You know, what sort of attracts it is that you honor it and entertain it. Just like when in the beginning of recovery, I remember, uh, you know, I had a really, really nasty attitude. So when things happened that were good, I just wanted more. You know. And I started, and something occurred is I learned a prayer that I used for like five years, in the first five years. And every time something good happened in my life, I would say, thank you, God, that was more than enough. Yeah? And then I used it, and then one day I stopped using it, and I'd never used it again. Because what it was sort of a substitute for finally showed up. Yeah? My attitude got infused with gratitude. I didn't need to do gratitude lists, though they're nice things to do, because I was seeing anew yeah? that something had changed. There was one fixated point, and that point shifted under the influence of recovery in about five years. Yeah? And that's sort of what happens. I feel like it's the thing is, is like we're on an operating table, and you just don't get up. And then this thing works on you. What you what you access through this program works on you, works on you, works on you. And as long as you stay in the condition of being the patient and don't play the doctor, it's a very successful operation. Yeah. As soon as you play the doctor and get off, yeah, then the illness starts ensuing again. Yeah. So I wanted to read a part of the big book, a couple of them that I really enjoy. And one of them is page 62 and 63, where right after he says that thing, see, like when I first was introduced to recovery, when I read the first step, when it said we're a palace over alcohol and our lives have become unmanageable, it sounded like the unmanageability was caused by the drinking, yeah? You know, my life, I'm palace over alcohol, and therefore my life became unmanageable. So I figured if I stopped drinking, then things would get really good. And I had a, a huge amount of rude awakenings when things that little problems or defects that seemed to constantly appear in my life, I attributed them to the drugs and the drinking. And yet I hadn't drank or drugged in a couple of years, and they were flourishing <laughs> in my life. So I like the way it says it in the end of how it works, much clearer to me, on page 60, where it says, you know, our description of the alcoholic, the chapter to the agnostic, and our personal adventures before and after sobriety, yeah? Our personal adventures before and after sobriety make clear three pertinent ideas. And we need to be convinced of this stuff. Yeah? And it says, the first one is that we were alcoholic and could not manage our own lives. Now that sounds totally different than the, the other statement. Yeah? The other statement seems like it's cause and effect, but now yeah, the, the cause is the effect. Yeah? So... What I found is why my life was unmanageable, I was constantly managing it. Yeah? So I realized I wasn't managerial quality, and that wasn't going to change. Yeah? And in that position of powerlessness, somehow a lot of power started coming into my life. And the trick is, if you keep in the admittance of powerlessness, you'll never experience powerlessness. You'll never experience the frustration that occurs when people don't do what you want them to do. You'll never, you'll never feel all that stuff of all the disappointments of manipulating and expecting and trying to coordinate people to do exactly what you want. You have the experience of power, of power assist will never happen again because you'll be in a state of power. Yeah, through the power, through the admittance of the powerlessness, what you access is power. Yeah, and when you exert power, what you access is our our experiences of powerlessness. 
we have the whole thing freaking backwards. Just like the idea of getting into the moment is was such a vogue, but it's based on an insane idea that you could be out of a moment. Yeah? There's not one moment in what you call your life that you were out of. And if you believed you were out of, if you saw a surveillance camera, you'd be in it. Yeah? <laughs> Even in this meeting, you may think you're not here. I'm not here, I'm not here, but you're here. Yeah? Because you can't be anywhere else. There's no escape, in a sense. Yeah? So this idea of I'm going to get into the moment is basically based on an insane idea that you could be out of the moment. So I think I shared it here the other night. You get the self-help book and it says, you know, how to get into the moment. And you usually never read the whole book, you know. And then you get, you want to rush to the next edition, which is how to really, really get into the moment. And then it's about how to really, really, really get into the moment. Yet the whole thing, why it never works is because you can't be out of the moment. Yeah? And then... Another way, people are trying to get out of self, and this is the real dilemma, but it's impossible that they're in self. They can only seem to be in self. You are something already, but it's not a something. You, may be, you, you could define it as no thing, or a spirit, or what, air, awareness, whatever you want, whatever word will never really describe it or capture it. It may just convey a sense of it in you, which is more than enough. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. So this whole idea of I'm trying to get out of what I can't be in and I'm trying to get into what I can't be out. You don't see that as ass backwards? Yeah? So people are trying to get out of self and the reason why it never works, I'll tell you, I, I would match my drug addiction to any spiritual devotee in the history of spirituality. In Hinduism, they have this one guy who's like a monkey god who's like the highest devotee of all to the Lord, yeah, Hanuman. I'd match my, my devotion to drugs and alcohol just with him, every step of the way. I surrendered everything to it. I loved it. I took everything I had and gave it to it. I took everything I could get from you and gave it to it. I <laughs> prostituted myself for it. I did everything. And you know what? I never transcended it because you cannot transcend an imaginary place. You cannot escape a place you cannot be in. Yeah? And it's actually the constant movement to escape that reinforces the sense of being in a prison. It's attempting to get out of it that causes the thing to seem like it's a prison. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it's really good. I'm really working hard to get out of self, but it's just an extended version of being in self. That's the whole point. Self cannot get out of self. Yeah. One of the reasons why is there is no self, and therefore the no self that there is none cannot leave the self that there is none <laughs> and find a self to be somewhere where it is. Yeah? If a mental process is producing the feeling of being you yeah, and reinforcing it with the interpretation of your life through the perceptual schematics and the, and the, the inner dialogue, if, and you weren't there when you were a baby... We grew into the sense of self. When you were a baby, up to 18 months, the research says, there's no sense of self. Yeah? And then around 18 months, the brain starts developing this insane idea, and it usually coincides with the, uh, with the workings of the language center. Because language is what reinforces the sense of self all day. Like I said with the hair, and my friend doesn't want me to mention it today, but the thing is, the, the language keeps implying that we have something to do with something we have nothing to do with. Tons of it. Yeah? We're constantly written into the story that we have nothing to do with. Yeah? And then we're beholden to that story, and if for some of us with alcoholism, it turns into a prison melodrama or a hospital melodrama, somehow you're not going to like the starring role, you know? <laughs> and yet at that point you can't get out because the definition is you're in yeah. the point is the escape from it is prior to it not after it all escapes after it are part and parcel of the, of the system you cannot escape it but prior to it you realize there is no need to escape because you have never been nor will you ever be there that's the only thing that truly works on a stabilized level. Everything else will be put in that dice game of I'm close, I'm, I'm disconnected, I'm connected. Yes, I've really, I've surrendered, I've taken it back. On and on and on and on. This idea of surrendering, 
that a lot of people experience in AA is they surrender it and then something important shows up in their life, money or a woman or a guy, and now they take it back. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, God, this is too important for you to handle. I'm, I'm very concerned about my body image. And then it's so funny, whatever they're not willing to give up, that's where the selfing manifests the most. All your fears will be about how you look. All your resentments is how other people look better, maybe. All of this will happen. You don't see it? Whatever hasn't been surrendered is claimed by the selfing. And it's using that as a petri dish to grow its manifestations. When you surrender it to a power greater than it, which is the only thing the parasite of selfing uh, respects as a greater power, it doesn't respect 5,000 years of noble spiritual paths. Could care less. It can wear a white robe just as good as a leather jacket. It can have tattoos. It can be wearing beads. It can smell patchouli oil or vodka. You know, it could care less. It can fit. It can morph into any situation and take advantage of it. It has no fucking respect for anything except for a power greater than it. Yeah, that's what puts puts the parasite at bay. It doesn't disappear the parasite because it was never there to begin with. Yeah, everything here. Nothing here that's happening ever happened. That's why it can happen again. Yeah? You never get rid of anything here. It's either imminent, it's either a, a, a possibility, or it's now a, an actuality. And what hawkens it into actuality and what keeps it into a probability is where your mind is. There's a thing in Lesson 2 of The Course in Miracles. I don't know if anyone's been introduced to it, The Course in Miracles. Interesting book. The Lesson 2 des describes a perceptual reality here, which is you and I give everything all the meaning it has. Yes? So, in other words, everything is seemingly. If you read the first forward in the big book, where they talk about we are 100 men and women who have, seeming, who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. The definition of seemingly, it appears to be true or false to you. So actually, the hopelessness of alcoholism depends on you, really. Because it can only appear to be true or false, but to who is it appearing to be true, true or false to? So what happens? It's a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Then maybe something occurs and you get introduced to this program or there's a divine intervention. And then it's not a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. And there's the inception of recovery from it. Yeah. But how does it seem so real? Yeah. If something isn't so, how does it seem like it's so real? It must be appearing real to what is real. Yeah. And I don't mean the country. Israel. <laughs> the Israel. How could false evidence appear real, which is the acronym for fear we use in San Francisco in recovery. False evidence appears real. How could false evidence ever be real? It doesn't say that. It says it appears real. And it appears real only because it's appearing real to someone. Yeah? To someone who in actuality is the reality. How could an illusion have a real effect unless that reality was being lent to it by reality. What do you believe we are? We are that reality. We are what's looking. That's St. Francis says when he says what's looking is what you're looking for. Not who's looking. You already found that. <laughs> you found it and you like to get out of it now. But it's stuck on you. Yeah? You make one mistake and it glommed on. Like a parasitical fucking... Ow! But what's looking is what you're looking for. So when something seems so real one day and doesn't seem real the next day and then seems real again the next day, it's sort of based on your condition. Yeah. If the reality isn't resting in its own reality, it's going to lend that to other things. Things are going to seem real. It's like this Course in Miracles says it so beautifully. You and I are the dreamer or the dreaming of this place. We forgot we're dreaming this place, and we've given everything we've dreamt all the power to affect us. How could something that's not so have the ability to affect? It must be getting it from what's so. And where is that what's so? You and me. This isn't a passive, a passive spiritual practice. This is incredibly empowering. You know what the fourth step does when you, you're in the position of, like everyone in a bar right now in Dover 
is doing the first two columns of the four column inventory. <laughs> they know who they're mad at and they know why they're mad at. They do. They have a big story of why they're mad at and they definitely know who it is, you know? But it's not producing any relief. It's just producing an urge to have another beer. Yeah? AA says, listen, we're just going to move that just a little bit. We're not even going to go that far. We're just going to take the light off of them and put it on us. I mean, it's, and, and that giant journey only takes two columns in the inventory. That's all. It's not a thousand mile visit uh, trip. It's just like, that motherfucker, he did this to me. Oh, what was my role in it? Oh, because the relief comes from here. There's no relief in all that information. It has to be brought back to what's giving it all the meaning. And if what's giving it all the meaning changes, that will seem to change. Yeah. So this is about taking what Bill W. said is the spiritual kindergarten of AA and just taking it back even farther to see that I'm giving everything all the meaning it has. And if it has a meaning of being as real as real can be, where else but from reality is it getting that meaning? How could what's unreal cook up reality? It can't. But it can seem to be so to reality. If the reality has forgotten its own nature and has now taken an identification as something else. Yeah? And in this, through this identification, it forgets its nature and now lives from this preconceived, fabricated nature of being a mind-body hybrid. Some fucking crazy thing. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, you don't say you're the body. You say it's my body. Who's the owner of the body? Yeah. Some real estate magnet? No. It's you somehow, but you're separated from the body, but you get all your relevance from the body. Because there would be no you to be thought about unless it was pictured as a body. When your mind, which has to reinforce the sense of self, goes back into the past to think about you, it doesn't think about you as a spirit. It thinks about you as a body. Yeah, That's the way. It's like a weather vane. You put it in a, an imaginary field. It's about me. And this is the weather vane. Then the thoughts go there, driven by your interest in it. Because if it was so, about someone else, you could care less. But it's you. So you go three years ago, and you, the thoughts go around that weather vane, and it produces something. What does it produce? It produces the sense of being that now. Now you feel like the self that you've been thinking about. Now you feel like the self. You're remembering the self when you think about the future, just as much as you're remembering the self when you, there's thoughts about the past. It's the exact same activity. All it's doing is using imaginary places it's made up, the past and future, to picture itself in them. And it goes, this is the logic. I was there. I can't argue with that. I'm, either I'm crazy or it's really valid that I'm worrying about what's going to happen when I'm over there. So it's like, I was there, I will be there, therefore I am here. <laughs> and then it's complete. It's over. Yeah. And you don't even know where it began. That's the dilemma. It's like being on a game board and you wake up to the game at square three. Yeah. And so from square three, you've got to make sense of the whole game board. Yeah. And, so, and then society tries to give you what the game board is. And there you're on square, square three. But square three is a mental process that happened in time. You're square zero. You're at square zero. You are the witness or the awareness of conscious contact. Yeah. There's something that's not a thing that's in contact here. What's facilitating that contact is consciousness. But for me, it's an awareness of the consciousness is what we really are. Yeah? So consciousness is in contact here through your seeing, your hearing, your feeling, your tasting, your touching. That's the experience of being alive. Yeah? And we hear the thoughts, just like we would hear a note if it was played. Yeah? Those are the six senses, and consciousness is streaming through them to produce an experience. Yeah? But the feeling of being the one who's conscious is, a, is like a bastardization of the real feeling, feeling of being the awareness of what's conscious. Yeah? Being aware of the consciousness. We've, we've, we've taken that sense of being present and we've, we've glommed it onto a body. So we think, well, as soon as I feel that, the mind rushes in and says, that's me. And the me is the body. It's a heist. Yeah? 
you you are truly in a sense of what you are almost in every moment of conscious contact, but it gets replaced by a mental idea that you're a body. Yeah? And then what happens is you forget all that, and then this place becomes real, and what you and I are dreaming has the ability to bite us in the ass. Because we have an ass. <laughs> And then we're, we are an ass. <laughs> so recovery is just an unbelievable thing. The steps don't produce a spiritual condition. They just diminish a mental state. The mental state is way overboard. Yeah. It's like you ever see those dogs that have mange? So to co- keep them from, from itching, they put those cones on them. We're like walking around with these cones all day. We're living right from here. We're just Kate, you know, K-Self is just broadcasting the golden oldies and boom, 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 all day. We've totally forgotten conscious contact. How much have you smelled today? How much have you touched? Yeah. How much you've heard, how much have you heard other than thoughts? The mental realm has sucked up all the consciousness moving through the gates and put it into being conscious, hyper-conscious about the thoughts that are about you. And you're not even that you they're about. That to me is slavery. Big time slavery. And of course, if a slave knows that he's enslaved, he'll do almost anything to get relief. Voila. Because I saw it as truly hopeless at the end. I spent two years in a program. They told me that it was over, that it was going to be better from then on. And I had this i had this hope that maybe they were right, but I had a strong suspicion they weren't. And as soon as I left, I got loaded again. And it was I went, entered into pitiful demoral, was, you know, impossible demoralization. And at that point, it was a hopeless state of mind and body. And I just wanted to stay high until I parked at the next door of institution jails and death. You know, to, because I was going to park there. That's how my where my life was going all the time. I just wanted to stay obliviated. And what happened with me? I didn't come out of here. It did not come to recovery on a bottom. I came from a divine intervention. I had had so many bottoms. I don't think I could have gone any lower. But something. It was a regular day at the office, and something, something interrupted the linear story of Paul Hedeman and slipped in some new information, which has been producing results for 25 freaking years. So, shit. (laughs) To me, that's a damn, damn incredible demonstration of what's possible here. Now, what would happen if I, having an intimate sense of that reality, turned my ability to make things real or unreal to it, and I matched the reality with my ability to make things real? Yeah? Instead of making all my problems and all this and all that real every freaking day, I actually lent it to reality. See what would happen. Find out. Things that looked unmovable can be able to be moved. All bets are off. You can enjoy peace of mind, like it says in the book. You'll feel a conscious presence of a higher power. You'll feel new power flow in. Yeah. You'll be reborn. To say these are all like ways of attempting to say what you can't say. But some of us in this room have been saved by this program. Yeah. To the point where the problem doesn't exist for us anymore. And that's a damn good solution. Yeah. If something that had so much influence over a long, as long part of my life has absolutely no influence at all, then how real could it have been anyway? Yeah? If something could seem not to exist anymore, it's because it doesn't exist. (laughs) And that's where the real relief is. You can't, in the in and out door of this interpretation, you're, you're thinking you're in, you may be out, and when you're out, you may be in. You have no fucking, I'm getting close to you, maybe as far as away as possible. You know what I mean? You think a good thing is a good thing, it's probably a bad thing. A bad thing is a bad thing, and maybe it be a good thing. You have no idea what's going on. Yeah. But prior to that whole dance, there's the relief right there. The relief is that nothing ever really happened. Yeah. 
to be unrelieved from, to be freed. There's no bondage, so there's no need to be free, because you're inherently free. That's the only place I found that worked. Everything else is just conditional and circumstantial, based on the whims and fancies of your own head. It's going to be your final authority how you're doing with God, not God. Yeah, It's going to tell you how you're doing as a knower of God. <laughs> you ever see in the... To me, the biggest unspoken step of AA is quit playing God. Yeah, They don't put a title to it, but if you look at the program as a procession, and that it goes from first to twelve, in the time when they're moving to the third step, and they start talking about, you know, in the rest of my life, God's going to be the director, I'm going to be the servant, something like that. But he says, just about five sentences before that, he says, first, you've got to quit playing God, and then next is the third step. Yeah, because what happens if what's playing God makes the decision to turn its will and life over to the care of that power, right? It's also going to make the decision to take it back, yeah? And then you're going to turn it over when you think, well, everything's going to shit, but then when you think, oh, I'd like to meet that person, take it back. <laughs> so what's the bigger God in that deal? The God that it was surrendered to or the God that's surrendering it? I would say it's the God that's surrendering it. That's playing God. When you wake up in the morning and your head tells you how the day's going to be before you even got up, that's playing God. When it tells you how you were, how you're going to be, how you are, how they were, how they're going to be, how they are, isn't that playing God? How can it play God? Where does it get the juice? From God. Yes? From you. Through the identification, you have gladly given it over. And now it's using the God juice that you're the container of to play God on you. <laughs> That's why saviors don't work, really. They don't. <laughs> so I would say, find out what playing God looks like in your life. It's going gonna, it's gonna to definitely issue forth from the head. It's not the elbow. It's not the ankle. It's going to be from the head, and it's going to pontificate based on an authority that it doesn't deserve at all. Yeah? It has never been successful. The whole thing in recovery says, you know, it really hasn't been. I mean, it's incredible. It says, like, you know, everyone talks about fear. We talked about it the other night, and Bill W. talks about it in this book, As Bill Sees It, where it says fear is the activator of all the character defects, yeah? And then the character defects get activated. I'm going to take it a little farther. They produce behaviors, yeah? And behaviors produce consequences, and then you're the butt end of the consequences, yes? Sure. And so then you're, then you're motivated to make another decision based on feel, fear, and that sets off trains of circumstances that bring you misfortune you feel you don't deserve. And then what do you feel then? You're fucking resentful. You're pissed off, and then you make another decision thing, and this loop is pretty fucking claustrophobic, and of course you want to get a little relief if you're going to be in it, so you have to do anything. You will have to shoot drugs when you know exactly where it's going to take you the next day, but at that point, the alcoholic and act of, of your type is that you're willing to pay any consequence tomorrow not to feel uncomfortable now, because you're in that freaking loop. Yeah. So he says, all right, everyone thinks fear is such a big cause. He's talking about fear is the activator of these defects of character. But what's activating the fear? He talks about in the fear inventory. He says, isn't it because self-reliance has failed you that you're in so much fear today? He doesn't give examples. He says the basic principle is if fear is, is rampant, it's because self-reliance is there. The fear is an effect of the cause of self-reliance. So self-reliance is the Petri dish. So it's at, at that point is where the relief of, from fear is. Not after the fear, but prior to the fear. So when there's a surrender, yeah, at that point, or even better, when there's a knowledgeable surrender where you see that you're not a self, yeah, because the, to me the highest form of reliance on self is identification. You can't get... You can't get more relied on something than to take it to be you. <laughs> I don't see it as going... You ever see those movies where the, the woman loves this starlet or wants to be just like this other this starlet and so she tries to go out with the starlet boyfriends and then she's not too happy so she kills them all. She wears exactly, gets plastic surgery. She is so into it, she's trying to become that person. We're, we're past that. We start... 
we're so beyond obsession with identification. It's having, it's, it can have like 50 obsessions a day, the identification itself. The obsessions are used to reinforce the identification. Without the mind obsessing about you, there wouldn't be a you that you'd be identified as. Yeah? It's got to be, the glue has to be applied like all day because it's like trying to glue water and oil. But if it does it a lot fast enough, it will seem as if it's so. It can never be so. It can seem to be so. Yeah? And, the, and what it rests on is what so will think it's so. Yeah? And therefore, what so and all that it represents will be forgotten. And now it will take on the identity of being a body, basically in a victimhood. Yeah? And that body and the mental idea will play God with the God juice, but it's a God that has very little power. How many people do what you want them to do? You know what I mean? <laughs> You're not very successful at Godding. Yeah? <laughs> You're not. But if this, if there's the surrender, however you want to do it, for me... I did AA and surrender. Was there's a great master called Ramana Maharshi, and he he on this he in one of his first books I ever read he wrote about us. He said for people who can't give up the sense of doership about what they've committed and omitted, it's better not to go the the way of knowledge but surrender, and to take on the role that thy will be done. Yeah, that's what AA offers in the beginning is a surrender to turn one's will and life over to the care of a higher power. At first, we, the only way we may do it is of our understanding, but hopefully in time, you will surrender it to, the, to a higher power of its own understanding. And then it becomes revelatory. Yeah? Because in the beginning, when it's your understanding, it's like maybe you'll get a date, you know, or a parking space at the meeting. Your, your, your wishes of godhood are very small, you know? But when you, when you give up your idea of that power and allow it to tell you what it is, it's revelatory, man. It is revelatory. It is fucking earth-shaking in a way. You can get to a point where the joy and the contentment, contentment stabilize and they become the basis of your day, not the irritable restlessness and discontent. It flips over, and now most of the time you're at ease, and there's spikes of anxiety or whatever, or dis-ease coming up in that. But basically, the basic note is like this baseline that's always there. All the other notes your mental, your mental little jazz player is trying to play, you know, to grab your attention. There's one note, there's one baseline that's going through every freaking moment, yeah? And now you're attuned to that. Now your life is resting on that. It allows you to travel freaking lighter. And I'll tell you, after that started happening on a stabilized way, that's what I found is the only thing I ever wanted. I didn't want enlightenment or anything fucking like that. I wanted to have an ease and comfort in my own skin and with other people in their skin, basically. And that's happened. Yeah. And I mean, it's happening. If it happened, it could, it could, it could not happen again. But it's happening. Yeah always available at all times. You may access it, you may not, but it doesn't mean it's not there. It's always available, man. It is always available. So this to me is freedom. It really is. There is a solution. Start wherever you are. Maybe the first thing to do is start questioning your thoughts and see if they're actually yours. Yeah? To see if you have anything really to do with them. Because the assumption is every thought is held as you're the thinker or it's about you. That's how it's held. The problem isn't with the thought. The problem is with the being the thinker of them. Yeah? I have immunity to your thoughts, but those same thoughts, if they're held as mine, can ruin my freaking day. Yeah? Really. If I see them as yours, they, can't, they don't affect me at all. If I see the same thoughts up here as mine, they have a huge amount of effect. Where are they getting the ability to affect? Not from the thought itself, but from the one who think, thinks it's the thinker or sees the thought. Yeah? We're it. This is the reality. What's looking, like St. Francis said, is what you're looking for. So I want to read this part. I didn't even get to it. <laughs> I got taken away on a tangent. I love this because this, 
you know, in the in the program, in the book, everything they describe about the problem I've intimately experienced, and every description of what the what the solution can provide, I've intimately experienced. That's a freaking great book, man. So here it says here, when we sincerely took such a position, which is the third step, yeah? When we sincerely take such a position, just a little bit of willingness, basically, that's all that's needed. All sorts of remarkable things followed. We had a new employer being all powerful. This is the, re- this is the difference, yeah? We've had an employer before, but it didn't have any power. Now we have an employer that has a lot of power. He provided what we needed if we kept close to him, and that's already covered because you can't be far from him. Yeah? How can you be far from everywhere? Did you ever go to Catholic school? I went to Catholic school and they had the three qualities of God. It's omnipresent, which means it's everywhere, omniscient, all-knowing, and omnipotent, all-powerful. Why aren't you bumping into it if it's everywhere? Why don't you sense it? If it's everywhere, why aren't we picking it up? Yeah. Because we're up the ass of self. (laughs) So he provided what we needed if we kept close to him and performed his work well. Yeah? That's it. The only thing you need to do is perform his work well. Do some freaking service. And some people say, you've got to have it to give it away. I believe all you've got to do is be willing to give it away and you'll have it. I don't think you have to be prepared to be a conduit for this. I think you've got to be willing. That's all. I've heard some incredible wisdom from someone who had two days of recovery. It wasn't their wisdom. It came in because it was necessary to be heard at that moment, and they were used as the conduit. Yeah, Just like here, the loving God is expressing itself in our group conscience. That's what we're feeling in this room. Something arises when these, these topics are even crudely pointed at, it provides an opportunity that there's a collectiveness that occurs, yeah? A sense of a higher power expressing itself through this group conscience. So he provided what we needed if we kept close to him and performed his work well. Established, so now it changes. So first you sincerely take it, you know, you're sincerely screwed, let's say, which produces a little willingness, and so you're willing to attempt to understand what's going on and surrender your willing life. And then it says, that's what starts happening. But now you get established in that position, yeah? And now the, the, the effects dramatically get upped, yeah? Now it says, established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves. It doesn't say we worked hard to become less interested. That would be being interested in yourself, yeah? <laughs> if you're working hard to become less interested, that's being interested. Self can't get out of self. This is an effect, it's not something you did. It's a byproduct of something that's happening. Yeah, You'll just lose interest in yourself and gain interest in others. Our little plans and designs, which I love, because if they're your plans and designs, they're big, usually. Yeah? <laughs> he puts this little rub, your little plans and designs. <laughs> I haven't seen an alcoholic who had a little plan you know what I mean? in my life. <laughs> Our little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. These are effects. These aren't doings. Yeah? You already did with a little bit of willingness what you needed to do, which is to realize you can't do it. Yeah? And then when in that realization that you're powerless and you can't do it, something does it. Like it says in AA, you know, God, you will realize that's God doing for you, and God's just a name. It's indicating something. That God's doing for you what you can't do for yourself. Expand what you can't do for yourself. You know what I mean? Expand the circle. Throw a lot of shit in there that you think you're doing and admit you can't do it for yourself and then you'll see something happen. Why say, why, if the principle is is offered, why make it small? You know? Why Why not go big? You know? So, Established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves, our little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life as we felt new power flow in. That's like when you're a conduit, you know? That's like when you're doing service. Let's say you go to an H&I meeting and you feel like shit, the girlfriend left, you have no money, 
and then you're listening to the other people share. And in at least maybe the most 10 minutes, that whole story gets broken and gratitude comes up. Yeah, You feel the new power flowing in. Why? Because you're just you're performing the it's it's works well. You're at a point of service, and the juice comes in, and you're the benefit of it. When when you have it by giving it away, in the giving it away, it's like water moving through a hose. It's not the purpose of the water to clean the hose, but because of its nature, by its moving through the hose, it cleans the inside of the hose. That's what happens when we participate participate in this program of service. That that. That water of spirit is moving through this conduit, and through moving through it, it also cleans it. Yeah, it's like that. People call it that God hole in there that we're busily trying to fill up. It's not even a hole; it's a portal, really. It's not to be filled up. If you stop putting shit in there, something would come out. Seriously. I swear. It's there. But if you keep throwing things in, it's like a big log jam. If you stop, something comes out. It's not a god hole. It's a portal. So he says here, uh, let's see. Yes, as we felt this new power flow in, as we enjoyed peace of mind. See, peace of mind is a quality of mind. But the ability to enjoy it is incredible. Yeah, peace of mind is there, but if it doesn't seem to be so for you, it will, won't. You won't have the experience of it. This is you're recognizing what's so by seeing what's not so, and then you enjoy peace of mind. You have the ability because you're not enslaved to time anymore. Yeah, you're not on like one of those walking, you know, those walking escalator things, you know, walkways where maybe you see something but you just kept getting moved. You're always moving to the next bigger and better move, moment. Yeah. And validating the moment you're in. We're always in this modality of here, there. I used to always use the, uh, you know, a simple example. Let's say I'm in my one bedroom apartment. I'm having a pretty nice day. Sitting there having some coffee. And I open up a magazine. There's a nice little th- big full page picture of a couch ensemble. You know? And I look around my apartment. I realize I'm couchless. You know, I don't have a couch. And my mind's starting to tell me all this stuff that would happen if I had a couch. (laughs) And he's telling me, I bet you'd meet a girl, and then you'd actually maybe conceive your first child on that couch. (laughs) And, you know, now it's got really rolling, and I really feel the need to have a couch. (laughs) And so now the here I was having all right time in has now been invalidated by a mythical there. Uh I picture that when I get the couch, it's going to be a whole lot better than it is now. So now I move towards that. I start saving my money, and I'm calling up my friends who have couches, and I'm pissed at them because they never told me how great it is. You motherfucker, you shouldn't have told me about that couch. And then and I'm calling them up. I say, hey, it's going to be couch day this Saturday. They're, they're delivering it. Come on over. No one wants, you know, no one shows up. The average, no one, you know, registers to come, you know, right? on Facebook. And so I, make, I sweep it all up, and they're, they're bringing in the couch. I'm really excited, you know. Oh, man, I've been suffering this couchless state for so long. I am so happy to get the couch. The couch arrives. I take the plastic off. I sit on it. It's pretty nice. But then the mind goes, i got to get a matching carpet for the couch. <laughs> so now, the mythical there, whenever I arrive at it, it's a here. Yeah. And then it's replaced by another mythical there. And then the slavery goes on and on and on and on and on. It does not It does it with spirituality. It does it with everything, yes? This moment, its agenda is to invalidate this moment because this moment does not, the self does not inhabit. The self is not so. It has to be remembered by a lot of obsession over there and then, yeah? By your fixation, the mind's fixation with the past and the future, you seem to be so. Yeah. When you're in this moment, when you're doing something you love, you forget to remember the self. And those are your peak experiences. And of course, the selfing comes back and claims it and says, oh, that was a great surf. It wasn't in the fucking water. It just claimed it to make a story of it and to neuter the real invitation that was offered. The absence of you is truly the presence of what you are. Yeah? Yeah. So it gets better, this thing. It's really cool. As we, as we felt this new power flow in, and, and as we enjoyed peace of mind, as we discovered we could face life successfully. Now this, I always tell this story. 
Because this is what happened, my first AA dance, yeah? <laughs> Which was my last AA dance. <laughs> it was very short-lived. That's why everyone's laughing, because they know about the AA dance. I went there, and I was on the men's side, you know, and then there was a bit disco ball, and the women's side was over there. And I must have drank about six Calistogas, because I would have been drinking beers if I was drinking, you know, something as a defense. Yeah, I was just drinking fucking Calistogas. And then I was sent over to the women's side like a scout, you know, because there was this girl I liked. I wanted to ask her, you know, to dance or go out, but I was afraid. But I, I decided to go over there, so... I walked over, and uh, I got up to her, and I said, do you want to dance? And she said, no. And the thing I'm scared of the most, rejection, happened, yeah? And my little egoic head just became a raisin, like, immediately. And then I turned away, because it was, was like with my pants down. She wasn't going, no, but. She said, no, and that was it. I turned around, and now... The light, the 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 uh, disco light was like a searchlight on me, and it was like a minefield. And I went over to the men's side, you know what I mean? But when I got there, I realized it hadn't killed me. I realized I could face life successfully. And a lot of times in life, you're going to be rejected. And I had an experience, and AA provided a safe enough place to take chances. And I failed miserably quite a lot. But I realized what I thought was going to kill me didn't kill me. Yeah. I was like breaking the trance more and more and more and more. So as, as we discovered we could face life successfully, as we became conscious of his presence, yeah, for the consciousness of that presence to become stabilized, the consciousness of you as present has, has to be forgotten. Yeah? That's why it says in, in St. Francis says, it's in self-forgetting that things happen. And the great Zen master said that you know, to study Buddhism is to study the self, and to study the self is to forget the self. Why is it so important to forget the self? Because the only way self appears to be real is it's remembered, yeah? If you cut the remembering of it, which we could call forgetting, then the sense of self doesn't appear to be you, yeah? It may appear, but it's not taken as you anymore, yes? The transfer of the reality to that is broken, and now the reality rests in its own reality. And inherently, you're free in a lot of levels, bro. And maybe some, you may have some old karmic winds that keep you down in this and there, but you're constantly, it's sort of like a weather front that's lifting. It keeps getting lighter and lighter. You don't see them, you may not see the light break through, but it's lifting and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Yeah. What more do you fucking want? It's on offer, but not to you. That's the good news. If it was to you, you'd screw it up. But it's on offer to what we are. Yeah. So it goes on, and I wanted to go to this. Here we go. As we became conscious of his presence, we began. So becoming conscious of that presence begins. It gives us the ability to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. We were reborn. Yeah. This, if you've been in recovery, you have an intimate feeling of this on some level. Yet how could the same expression be intimate for all of us? Because we're getting relief from the same thing, a parasite called alcoholism. It doesn't matter how uniquely we think we're different as, as the hosts. The parasite that's dominated our lives is exactly the same. So the result of freedom from it is very similar. So a lot of people in this world are reading this book and are going, aha, to these descriptions. People in Bombay, people in Hoboken, people in San Francisco that may have nothing to do with you, but they have to do with what's taking you over quite a lot. And we're all experiencing some level of freedom from the one parasite. Yeah. The one parasite's influence is lifting, and we get to have this sense, and it's always coming to it, not achieving it. Not, not no thought or effort, but something occurs, and then we find out about it. Yeah, we find out that hey, I sense a presence. Yeah, I be, I, I start, I find out that I'm losing fear because why I'm losing fear in today, tomorrow, and hereafter. You see it. Yeah, it's not a big leap. People talk about a leap of faith. The leap of faith is keep relying in the head. It never delivers the goods. Every one of us in this room has tons of faith. Tons of faith. Faith manifests in your life by the vehicle it's put in. If you put it into this thought system, it's going to produce anxiety. 
Lots of anxiety over and over and over again. It's only the faith that will make that anxiety seem to be so. It's only the faith. If you put the faith in a vehicle such as the presence of this power, yes, you're going to have an ease and comfort now. Not an ease and comfort that you're promised later on. Now. Yeah. I want to get to page 84 because these are some other descriptions of what's going to happen to some of us. And some of us it's happening to already. Yeah? This is incredible. After the ninth step where he talks about... Uh, yeah, this is unbelievable. And we have ceased fighting anything or anyone. So now it's way past alcohol. It's totally forgotten. Yeah? Anyone or anything. <laughs> That's a pretty broad description of what you're now not fighting. <laughs> anyone or anything. I don't think you can find anything that falls outside that, can you? <laughs> anyone or anything is pretty, a pretty big coverage. Yeah? So at this point, which is around step 9 and 10, yeah, and we have ceased fighting anything or anyone, even alcohol, but for by this time, sanity will have returned. So we'll have a sound mind now. Yeah? Not a split mind. We will seldom be interested in liquor, if tempted, we recall, we coil from it as from a hot flame. We react sanely and normally, and we will find that this has happened automatically. Yeah. None of us bring any of this about. A lot of it's brought about through us, but none of us bring it about. Yeah. We will see that our new attitude toward liquor has been given us without any thought or effort on our part. <laughs> <laughs> you're totally irrelevant <laughs> that's what I love about it we're, we're totally irrelevant <laughs> you'll see that this new attitude toward liquor has been given us without any thought or effort on our part basically you have nothing to do with it bro <laughs> just do service hang out and you'll see what happens it just comes it just comes. That is the miracle of it. You better freaking believe it. We are not fighting it, neither are we avoiding temptation. We feel as though we have been placed in a position of neutrality. Now, you and I can never find neutrality. We can't achieve neutrality, but we can be placed there. Yeah? And when you're placed there, after a while, you'll realize you're in a place of neutrality. You will find out yeah? by its demonstrations. Like Jesus says, you'll know the tree by its fruits. A good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bring, bring forth good fruit. You'll know the tree. You can't know the tree, but you'll know it by its fruits. Yeah? So now, some power, I would, whatever you want to name it or not name it, is manifesting or expressing itself through us. And through the expression, we find out. We get an intimate sense of what that may be. Yeah? We feel as though we have been placed in a position of neutrality, safe and protected. We have not even sworn off. Instead, the problem has been removed. Now, that's a damn good solution, eh? It's not been vanquished or, or killed. It's just been removed. It does not exist for us. What's going to exist for you when this doesn't exist? Find that out, yeah? That's what the life of sobriety is. Finding out what exists for you and as you and through you when this fucking thing doesn't exist as you and through you and for you. Yeah? It does not exist. We are neither cocky nor are we afraid. That is our experience. That is how we react so long as we keep in fit spiritual condition. Now it says what we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. What would be the highest form of maintenance of a spiritual condition? I would think realizing you're a spiritual condition. Yeah. Then all day, just the realization that you're a spiritual condition would be the maintenance of the spiritual condition. Yeah. What else would you be maintaining all day if you were entertaining you were that? You would be maintaining, hey, I'm that. <laughs> To me, it's the highest form. At points, you may not be willing or able to start there, so you do all this stuff, but inevitably, everything leads to I need do nothing. 
really, deep down, everything will lead. If it's if it's worth its salt, it's gonna it's gonna show its its failing quality. Every fucking practice in this world, because it's got to lead to the point you realize I need do nothing. Yeah, that's the revelation. Now, you may not be willing to receive it, so now we practice and do stuff to diminish the mental state so we get to the point where we'll be ever receive the grace that's always available at all times. Like in The Course in Miracles, it says, the biggest impediment to the holy instant, which is this moment, that's how they describe it, right? The holy instant, the only moment there is. It says, the biggest impediment to the holy instant is you're not believing that you're worthy of it that you have to prepare yourself for it, that there's something you have to do to make ready for the holy instant. All you need and all we need is a little willingness. If you're in this program just coming into recovery, all you need is a little willingness just not to drink today and wait till tomorrow and see what happens. Yeah, And let some momentum build behind you because if you start choosing to go in one direction over and over again, a momentum will build behind you and what you couldn't get through, you'll move through pretty easily. And as soon every time you move through those speed bumps that used to always throw you off course, honor it, man. Honor that something's working in your life that caused you not to get high that day when you know you would have gotten high that day. Yeah? Because that's the power that's great in you. And if you don't honor it, it will be easily dismissed. You've got to put like an erect a mobile temple right there and remember, Jesus Christ, I've been in this situation hundreds of times and hundreds of times I've gotten loaded and something happened that, that was different this time. Usually it has something to do with a pause, yeah? Where something stilled that active reflex of I'm going to get fucking high, stilled it for something else to occur. Yeah, That's the power that's greater than us or greater than self working in our lives. Honor it and it will work more. You'll just notice it, yeah? You're the one that can make it seemingly not so. And in a sense, you're the one that can make it seemingly so. And when you make it seemingly so, it's going to verify that it is so. It's going to verify it. You're going to know it by its roots. It will echo, like for me, it's an unspoken yes. Or like it's an echo that never ends. Something hit me, and I knew it was true before all other knowledge. And I just got... My mind started entertaining. This is what happened with me, really, with recovery. When I saw it in that statement about self manifesting in various ways is what has defeated us, when I entertained the possibility that I may not be that, the first thing that I never found before immediately showed up as a possibility. I can be free of it. As soon as the identification was questioned, a possibility that was never possible when I was identified as it. I was entertaining being free as it quite a lot, but never from it. Yeah? When I heard this message, I saw I entertained to be free from it and that worked. Yeah? I don't need to fucking therapize what I'm not. I don't need to get it socially uh, disciplined for what I'm not. I just see I'm not that. Yeah? And then immediately, I have immunity to the fields where the self is, is, is uh, harvested, which is the past and the future. Yeah. And it has, no, it has no ability to, it cannot show up here, the self. It can only appear to be here through you lending your reality to it. You allow, you, by giving it your reality, you allow it to take your place in a sense. And what you get back is an interpretation of life. Yeah, you're not living anymore. You're interpreting it. And to me, it was dry. You know, it was the same old story over and over again. This is like having your hand on the pulse of life. You're alive. You know, you're conscious. You're awake. You see, blue is blue and red is red. Things aren't confusing anymore. Without any effort or thought, it just happens. Like it's just said, it just comes. Yeah. For me, it's just allowed me to travel lighter. And, and the hell I was in, you know, you shoot coke, you're up sometimes like seven to ten days. I would be in like an exquisite hell, mental hell. It was fucking unbelievable. 
and I just couldn't see how I got out of it. How I could, I tried to get out of it, but because I was thought I was in it, <laughs> and that was the biggest dilemma. I never was in where I thought I wanted to get out of. That's why it never worked. <laughs> I can't escape from an imaginary place. You cannot solve a problem that doesn't exist. Yeah. Every solution you have for an imaginary problem is a bigger problem. Yeah? Yeah, happens. Just like if someone's bummed out and, uh, you know, maybe I'd even go to a movie with them if they say, I want to go home and think about it. Please don't. Don't, because the thinking's going to spawn about 20 other problems. Yeah. <laughs> You're applying the problem <laughs> to an imaginary problem. That's a problem. <laughs> a big fucking problem. <laughs> start with alcoholic thoughts. Yeah? Take this thing. How many meetings have you gone to in a couple of months? Yeah. I went to a lot of meetings in the beginning. And I came in with a thick shell of terminal uniqueness. I really did. No one thought like I did. No one felt like I did. No one did the things I did. You know, There's no way anyone can get through to me. I'm so unique, so special. And I sat there listening to people in the rooms. And after a few months, I could only come to two conclusions. How did these people get my thoughts? And my feelings and my reactions. Is that what we share, right? We share our thoughts and feelings and reactions. Like, so it sounds very familiar. They sound like mine. How could they be mine if you have them? Then I realized that's exactly right. They're not mine. <laughs> <laughs> They're from a foreign installment. They're from a parasitical mental process called selfing. And it's sitting on all these seemingly separate hosts. Yes? And it's downloading the same thoughts, the same feelings, the same behaviors through all of us. Yeah? And yet, while they're coming through, we keep calling them ours. What, that can, how more identified can you be than when a foreign installment is expressing through this opportunity, the opportunity keeps calling it theirs. Yeah? There's a huge difference between fear and my fear. There's a huge difference between thought and my thought. There's a huge, huge difference between feeling and my feeling. Yeah? When the mind drops out, you see life is happening. When the mind is in place, you see it's happening to you. That's what happens. When the mind's not, not, not uh, influential, you see life happening. It's pretty incredible. When, it is, when the mind's there, life's happening to you. And of course, why is it happening to me? It shouldn't be happening to me. And then just mental avalanches fall. So there is a solution, you know. We're all in it right now. People say, well, how many means should I attend? This one would be good. Yeah. <laughs> the one that you're at, why don't you attend that? Oh, I'm planning on doing 90 days. How about just show up here? Feel this right now. Sense it. This is the manna from heaven being offered, yeah? It's soaked in already. You've all been served a spiritual subpoena. You don't even know it. <laughs> and what's beautiful, I'll tell you, most of us, our life has been judged by the court of mind. Yeah? And there's no way. You're, we're already convicted there. We're just doing time, hoping for a, for a fake probation that's never going to come. Because you're convinced that you fucked something up. You know, I had the one that always got me when I was out there using... I was waiting for this inheritance because I got run over by a car, so I think I was going to get this big settlement. So I talked a lot of coke deals into fronting me, a lot of coke. <laughs> well, you'll get, I'll pay you double then. And while I was doing all these nefarious things, I had this one noble idea I held on to. When I get the money, I'm going to give my mother some of the money, you know, like two or $5,000, whatever. And that made me feel somewhat okay. And year out and year out it went. And then suddenly I got the call that they were going to give me the money in New York. I had a flight in New York. They weren't, give, they weren't going to give it to me all at once because they knew who I was. I had a sign. They'd give me 7000 or something. In this so I got it. And as soon as I got a couple of checks, I bought as much Coke as I could, maybe half a pound or maybe like 6000 <laughs> And I was driving to the Hamptons, which is this resort area. My mother lives in Long Island. And I drove right through the town my mother lived <laughs> And I never stopped to give a fucking anything. So I was I was convicted on that charge. And I don't care how many people forgive me, it didn't matter. It was unforgivable. 
But when I came into this program and the influences that have been on my life, all of that stuff was brought into the court of light, yeah, where it got annulled. Yes? I truly saw that I was powerless when I was under the alcohol and drugs. And that whatever I did, I had no say really in the matter. I couldn't help myself. And why is there so much guilt and shame being harvested by those past behaviors, yeah? Because alcoholism and relief from alcoholism doesn't really deal with the original addiction, which is the mind's addiction to self, which is truly rooted in you being the doer of the actions. Yeah? So people get the idea of powerlessness, but they're still in recovery, but with a lot of shit, guilt and shame about what they think they did, because the relief is really from here. Yeah? You get, you get relief from alcoholism to get the true relief from the addiction of mind to the idea of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. That's where that's the original addiction that spawns all other addictions. Because this addiction, the mind wants to be something it can never be. It wants to be a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. And it's so crazy, it will say it, it wants to unbecome something it can never be, like a loser. So it's busily trying to unbecome something it thinks it is and become something it thinks it isn't. Yes? This desire is never fulfilled. And have you, have you ever had a thwarted desire in your life? Like when you couldn't get the dope? Yeah? Maybe three pints of agen Not for dope, you just drink lousy fucking malt liquor or something. You know, to me. <laughs> just to stay loaded until I could get high. But people, let's say they want to meet the guy or the woman and it doesn't go well. Well, they run home, buy two pints of agen get a movie they've seen eight times already, and sit there. A lot of behavior comes out of a thwarted desire. That selfing is a constant agitation of thwarted desire. Constantly agitated. That's why you're irritable, restless, and discontent. You do not have a placid, uh, serene mind. It's agitated. It's selfing. Yeah. And it's never, com- it's never going to reach, reach a crescendo where it becomes complete because it can't culminate the desire. It can't be what it cannot be. It, spirit cannot be a thing and forget itself as spirit. It can't. Yeah? The mind wants it to seem to be so, but it can't produce it. So that unrequited, unrequited desire is constantly agitating the mind. So you're tr- like Zen says, there's a beautiful statement, you can't use agitation to find stillness. You can't use, what is it? Agitation to find stillness, that would be agitation, right? So if I take an agitated mind to peace, what is it going to do? It's going to use the topic of peace to agitate the mind. Just like in spirituality, enlightenment bums more people out than anything else. Because they keep saying they're not enlightened. So they're using what's, what's meant to symbolize total peace to stir up the agitation. This is what happens all freaking day. Anything the self in comes in contact with, it will claim. It will take advantage of. Yeah. And the advantage is represented by the word my. It says like my, we do is, we used to always do it, the relationships. So we put relationship up here, money here, health here. Yeah? Everyone would give it a little bit of a meaning. Yes? Now we add one word. My money changes the weight, doesn't it? Woo! My sex, woo! My relationships, woo! So much weight added. We're not saying get rid of the relationships, money. It's a subtraction. Just drop the my. You'll travel a lot lighter through all the topics of money, relationships, and sex. Yeah, a lot lighter. It's the my. It's the act of being identified as the one who has the money. Someone who has a belief that there's never enough, he may have a million dollars. Now, a million dollars, like the way where I live, would last maybe three months in Marin County, very rich place in California. But a million dollars should be pretty good. It should produce a sense of ease and comfort around money, yeah? But his belief, it's never enough. So let's say the million dollars drops down to 999, 99,000. The guy's having huge amounts of anxiety about the money, yeah? You see how the mind does it? I saw a guy come over. He just got an inheritance of $250,000, and he started complaining about all the problems it was bringing. I said, well, kick down $70,000. i will take it right now. I'll enjoy the hell out of it. He's like fucking it over. I said, I cannot believe it. You just got this boom, and you're pissing all over it. This is the self thing, yeah? 
there's a solution. Just get the right diagnosis. Really find out what the root of the problem is. You start getting re- recovered from alcoholism, see what the real root of alcoholism is, which is the identification itself. When you get relief from there, then you'll get re- true relief from all the guilt and shame you're still suffering from. Guilt and shame has to rest on the branch of being the personal doer. It has no place to land other than your identification as the one who did it. Yet the first step, the first part says you were powerless over it. It's sort of like alcohol is like dancing with a gorilla. You're going to stop when the gorilla wants to. Yet we hear that and we intimately feel it, but the, the guilt and shame is still constantly being produced about something you had nothing to do with. You were transportation for a parasite. Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> it could cross into beating a dead horse soon, so I don't like, I like it. This is an invitation, right? You have a lifestyle already, probably. Maybe it's recovery. This will illuminate it. But this is not a path to illumination, what I'm sharing. It has there's nothing to do with paths, but it will illuminate whatever path you're on. Yeah? I already have a way of life. I, wasn't, I don't need to look for one. AA is a way of life for me. But this has brought a huge amount of illumination to AA for me. Yeah? Yeah. This is not to replace AA. AA deals with the mental, physical disease of alcoholism. This deals with your own nature. Yeah? It shows you what you're not so that what you are can become obvious. Yeah? AA deals with the what you're not because right now it may seem to be so much of you. It breaks that down and in that breaking down something can become obvious that maybe I'm not that. And then that's that really. So AA gives me a way of life and this is what illuminates the way of life. AA gives me meanings everywhere. Every meaning I go to I sense that presence. Yeah, It gives me the opportunity to be of service to people who are suffering from that addiction to self. Yeah? And who's trying to drink it away or do drugs to get away from it. But obviously it always says the drinking and the drugs are just a symptom. You know, they're, they're not even close to the cause of the problem. Yeah? So I have everywhere I go in the world there's meetings. There's tons of service so that you can have that sense of being out of self. It's a nice experience. Yeah? Yeah. So, any questions tonight? Had enough? That's pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, look at you got everyone clapped for your question. You went like this, everyone. doesn't replace the mechanics of, like, what do you think? Well, I mean, it doesn't, I'm down with the mechanics of, yeah. all because it's about the process of breaking that down. So, it just, you know, your concepts and everything, like, I heard you a couple of years ago, and I was like, get me the frick out of here. I'm like, I don't know what the hell's going on here. But now that I've been part of this, and experienced more, I understand. I, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm walking yeah. with you. But the thing is, is that I had to do the mechanics of this yes, to yeah. get to that point. Yeah. So I just wanted to, because there's a lot of people new or starting out or whatever. Yeah. It does not, I mean, for me, it does not replace that, like you said. I'm glad you said that, because that's exactly what was thrown in my mind. Oh, yes. Well, that's the truth for me. I still live this way of life. I probably go to more meetings than I ever did now. And the thing is, it's now I never choose to go to a meeting. It's just which one. Yeah, I'm in the habit of it. It's my tribe. So no, it's a great way of life to have this express. It really allows a big field for traveling lighter to express on. Yeah, yeah, really. So well, a lot of people want to do take this and make it into something. But I always, I usually put out that disclaimer because what you're you're really learning about what you're not. That's what you're doing in AA. AA is dealing with what you're not. And then, as you can see, when that gets broken down, then all these effects occur from what you are. And that's like no thought or effort. You know, you're going to lose interest in uh, yourself. and gain. All of these are effects of what you are appearing. 
Yeah, but first, what you're not has to be diminished, and the 12 steps are a perfect set of principles that diminish the mental state as represented by alcohols. It works, yeah? And then something becomes obvious, and that's the, that's the source of all the effects they're talking about, not thought or effort. You know, the thought or effort work on the diminishment of the mental state, but the spirit, there's no thought or effort involved in. It just downloads into your life. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Real simple question. Yeah. Do not get the couch. What? <laughs> <laughs> it got it got repossessed because <laughs> I drank on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever had a couch. Really. <laughs> yeah. I still dream. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I think it's a little too late for conceiving my first child but who knows you know <laughs> <laughs> there was many things like that yeah. that's the whole point a lot of that stuff gets dismissed you lose interest in it you can't believe how much everything is is rooted back into it's like it's like a row of knots and let's say some of them are material security sex relationships like this and we have and we're traveling through and we run into a lot of knots about you know, like an AA says, we're incapable of having a viable relationship with another human being. That's a pretty big knot in personal <laughs> relationships, right? So you run into these knots, and you try to do your best to loosen them, yes? And so you loosen it, and you're really gung-ho, and it looks like it worked, but then it seems to tighten up again. But if you go back to the first knot, a thread runs through the first knot through all the other knots, yeah? And when this first knot, this loosening of identification as help happens, you'll see its effects throughout your life in all the topics and subjects of your life, yeah? So you can see you're on to something. Yeah. yeah. Now, I sponsor people, and they're, they're doing their fourth steps. There's no, speedy, there's no speed reading course. They do their fourth steps. You've got to see how self defeats you, yeah? But call it as self, not you. That's the dilemma. A lot of people present the inventory and they present it to me in a distorted way where it says very clearly that being convinced that self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. And then it says, if we're convinced of that, we'll now look at its, meaning self's, common manifestations. And then the next paragraph starts with the word resentment. So if you follow the logic, a resentment is an expression of self. That's, and it's one of its manifestations, how it defeats who? Us. So there's a difference. So self is manifesting in various ways, and that in its manifestations it defeats us. How does it have that opportunity? We're identified as it. Every time it enters an aspect of our life, we don't ask for its papers. We just says, hi, it's me. Yeah? It has carte blanche. It goes into our relationships, our everything, and it fucking take, and it, it interprets it all. Yes, it's, it has no life like a parasite, and it gets a life through the host. Yeah? And it's such a n nasty parasite, it has to have one of the greatest strategies of all to, to mask its, its presence. It causes the host to identify as it. So you're sitting there going, I want to talk about my fears. They're expressions of self. Oh, what about my... No, expressions of self. How about self-pity? Oh, definitely expression of self. <laughs> Look up the word self in the dictionary. Then they have a hyphen. They have about 80 different <coughs> descriptive adjectives. And then go to spirit. They've got one definition. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? One definition, spirit. Self, self-emulation. They have some, like 10% are nice and about 90 are not. There's like self-love, there's self-destruction. self Self-care, self-emulation, you know, burning yourself to death. Whatever. It's fucking insane. And so you want to have that just like your head. If you're having a good time, how long does it last until it says something? You don't deserve this. When are they going to find out what a fucking asshole you are? <laughs> yeah? But the same head, if you're having a bad day, says it's going to last forever, doesn't it? You want to live under that? All you need is one example. Why go? Why do thorough research? Get an example. You'll see its theme. It shortens up what's good and elongates what seems to be bad. You want to live that way? No, I don't. I don't want to live that that interpretation. Everything that's good gets shrunk. Everything bad. Ooh, I'm going to be depressed forever. Whoa. You know, something you can go away for five minutes. I'm depressed. 
Whoa, and it's going to be forever. <laughs> Who the hell's going to get up? If that's playing God and you're taking it to be so, you won't get up. And you will be in a depression. What, what you believe will come to pass. If your faith is in that thought system, you will be depressed. Yeah. If the faith is now, not you move it, but moved to something that, in other words, all that happened with me is my head was located in one system called self-centeredness. And then it got shifted to centeredness. That's all. It's the same centered. The centered is the same, but now it's centered. Not self-centered. It's a different story. If you want to call it centered in spirit, call it that. But it's a whole different angle. And I'll tell you, the view is a lot nicer. Yeah? And I, tr- I know you. I know what's taking you over. It took me over. I love this tribe of AA, and I'd like to see some stabilized relief. You know? And it's a possibility. But we need to hear it so we can entertain it. You can't turn on that quality of being able to entertain unless the possibility is offered. You won't come to this. You won't. I had to hear it from outside, and I was spending a lot of time in spiritual practices. I was in India and in Thailand and meditating for 14 hours a day, and this didn't come to me. I heard it from someone outside, someone outside, and they gave me this little idea, this novel idea, and my mind entertained it. And all the freedom I hoped from all those practices, I got by none of it. I just, my mind entertained it, it cracked open, and it, that's all it does now, every freaking day. It entertains that, all day while I'm doing whatever. And I'm not doing whatever that well. I'm losing tons of shit, I'm totally spaced out this trip, but my mind is still resting in that. Yeah? I'm losing all sense of connection to this place, I swear to God. I need like a secretary. I've lost like so many things already. Just I've been at a different place every night, Toronto, here, it's just... Yeah, I need the way my mind seeming. I need to be in a familiar place, maybe in an institution or home soon. <laughs> maybe I may be going towards that. Yeah? <laughs> Time for your walk, Mister Hedman. <laughs> There's nothing here. Yeah. Yes, Mister Hedman. <laughs> so, uh, will that be it? Yeah. Where's the man? Yes. Yes. I'll say, yeah. So we're going to pass the basket, yeah? Oh, you passed already. And we have shirts that are for sale. Uh, Zen bitch slap shirts. This is pretty cool. Now, I want to explain the design. This is the one. This this comes from uh, an old uh, way of life called the Tao. You ever hear the Tao, the way? So this represents, that's its symbol. And there's the sun and the moon, which represents duality. Because this place of manifestation is oneness appearing as two in a sense yeah and this is the dragon of light of the manifestation going along this circle of yes no high low connected disconnected yes male female all like this and then you got zen bitch slap right on top of it which is hopefully what you receive tonight yeah (laughs) and then we also have a dancing monk people say it's a buddha but it isn't to correct uh it's a this is a monk you see and he's quite ecstatic because he's uh, he's entertaining that sense of presence. Yeah? Yeah. All right. That's it. We'll end with a serenity prayer. I want to end with a prayer? A moment of silence for those still sick and suffering in and out of the rooms, followed by the Lord's Prayer, who keeps us sober. God, our Father, our Heavenly Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
Or as the Sargadotta used to say, who wants to know? Yeah, yeah. I still love that. I know. It's the last time. <laughs> You've got, you're all heated up. That's great. Now look at there is no hope. There is no hope. There is no That's right. Exactly. There is no hope. But yet these, these words right, are being transmitted. I know. I know. So From one object to another yes. other object, yes. witnessed by subjectivity. Yes. Yeah. But no one is actually asking a question. And no one is answering. And you're question. definitely not going to get an answer. Right. So there you go. And you definitely cannot give an answer because there is no you. That's right. And I wouldn't so if there was anyone. Anyway. So if exist. there was a you, I wouldn't give you an answer anyway. Right. Because it wouldn't work. Right. So, th- so things exist. Yeah. Things exist without them having, without there being a subject to the sentence. Exactly. So it just exists. Yes. What's the source of its Everything existence? Everything is verbal. What's the source of existence if there is no subject? Who wants to know? It's like that thing. Well, I would say I know. There is no I. Right. There is no I. 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 So you're dying to find out, but you're what? dying as that what you want to find out. The question is that question. Yeah. 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 Well, yes. There's subjectivity, but we're out there. They can't call yeah. yeah. that man. Subjectivity. No, we are the subject. What is the subject of the sentence? I know. The subject of the sentence is you and me. In the language. In the language. Because we're living in language is a reflection of, yes. this, of this illusion. Well, to me, it supports the identification of self. Which is an upgrade oh, illusion. Oh, because it's a subjective yeah. language. Yeah. 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 Yet it works. Yeah. Yet it works. Well, seemingly. Hey, you're <laughs> you're I love you, brother. You're I true. love you. You're I true. do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. My pleasure. Well, come back Friday. Well, we'll be be yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
Yes? Yeah. Incredibly yeah. infinite, totally beautifully clear and crisp. Everything happens in it, there's nothing that happens in it touches it. Yeah? That's what our mind And what about is. pain? When you experience pain? Who is it? What? When you I experience pain, for sure. So, so what's the current? I can be saying I'm starting to feel pain in my ass. <laughs> so, so we can <laughs> Huh? Yeah, all right, you're right. Okay, no. no all right. Uh, only two. Okay. Just, just start with it, you know? Let's say if pain seems so real, it must be seeming real to reality. Yes? Wow, did you tell so you the subjectivity is allowing yeah, every, all of this. This has no reality in it. There was an actual job. It's lent reality by the reality. Yeah. <laughs> yet the reality can't be seen and observed like we observe everything else here. Yet it's the subject. Yeah, it is subjectivity. It is the subject. Yeah. Yes, that's right. All right. I would say subjectivity. This is an action. A subject implies a noun. Right. I don't see there's any noun. Well, it's I'm all just seeing lock up. I'm just getting no rose. Okay. 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 Thank you. Honey, you are so happy. Well. I stand. Am I going to get your number again? I, tem- I lost it already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have, but I can only get it again. Here it is. Let me see. Okay. Right. Okay. Mike, see, okay. so this, this is going in here. Okay. So remind me. Me? I just lost my keys. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> I, just I probably my, have them. I'm just going to get my wife started off the set now. I'll be right back in here. Like, uh, oh, Michael. Yes, I'm ready. Paul? Yeah. So, uh, you, uh, you're yeah. working with the start of the artist here. <laughs> I really are. I, I, I really never, you know. Yeah, I'll see you Friday. Yes, yes. Yeah. I've never heard anything like that. Yeah, I'd like to do that yeah, one time. Right, right, okay. okay, sounds good. All right, I'll talk to you on Friday now. Yeah, all right, cool. Because I found my talk is a lot. Some things were similar. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there was 11 years, and then I don't take commitments much anymore. I like the I don't know where I get my shit. I don't know either. Well, what I found myself talking about. I'm very entertaining. I'm very entertaining. I'm very entertaining. I'm very entertaining. I got involved with a group called the Never Again. Which is like a little bit of radical like based on the right hand side. Yeah, it's Wisconsin every morning. And they had a couple things in 99, 98, 99, 2000. I was living in LA and I love the course. I mean, I can't. People wanted me to teach through it all the time, and it's too much for me. It's too conceptual in some ways as a delivery. Okay, so. So I, you know, I was attempting it, but after three minutes, I realized it wasn't really calling me. No, no, no. I don't like listening to anyone else or anything. Because I like coming to the table. And that's what I love about it. I don't play with it. That's very. I don't want it to be. Because I can hear someone else, or let's say I hear someone else, and I maybe get an idea of what they're saying, but it hasn't gotten flesh and blood yet in my own experience or my own traveling with it. So when I put it out, it's not, it's tinny. It doesn't sound, it doesn't have the timber. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is like you want to hit the right note. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was doing the detox, it evolved for me. It, was, it seemed as if the, the main thing they had to get was that the first step. It was all about the first step. Yeah. You know, it was all about recognizing. And I used to use the disease model. I found that, you know, that was the most effective way because, you know, people could accept the disease. So they right, could accept yeah. getting help for a disease. And if they got the fact that, what they had was a disease, and the and symptoms, and disease, the symptoms yeah. were behavioral. Yes. Yeah. Then you know, if I have a pain in my heart and chest, I don't hate myself. I go to the doctor. 
I know. So, you know, it's like it was. It no, was the disease way. really helped me when yeah, I came that in. Disease because I had a lot of guilt, you know, that it was my doing. And then I also. I was not getting out from underneath that. It was right. very heavy. Yeah. So I drank a lot about that, you know, yeah. loaded. I just didn't want to be caught conscious with all that right. hanging over my head. Well, what I felt. There's only a few things you have a chance of getting through in a detox environment, and one of them was just trying to take a, a chunk out of the self hatred. Yeah, you know, sure. because I drank a lot yeah. of the self hatred. Yeah. That. So if you could get that first step, just give them a glimpse of that. That was a kind of liberation. The first step is liberation. Oh, okay. totally. It's totally. total. It's the only yeah. step you need if you absolutely get it. If you want to look at uh, the biggest demonstration of spiritual principles on this planet, it's through AA. They're producing more things. change, and obviously the contrast is so complete, you know. It's amazing. So I, I go to a lot of meetings with him. I'm not a, an alcoholic, yeah. or, you know, but, anyway, but and I go to a lot of meetings with him, and it's really, wow, it's really amazing. It is. It's yeah. a very, it's an incredible very thing, yeah. Well, you know, when they brought it out, they weren't just, they weren't thinking of having it only for alcoholics. They saw the broader yeah, application, no, but yeah, now, like everything else, everything gets pigeonholed, so people who don't have alcoholism don't think they'll never go to meetings, usually. But if they went and they started practicing the principles, it would be really good. Hey, no, I get a lot out of it. And it's, the, it's like the one, that tribal aspect of sitting around the fire a lot of people in the world don't go to any meetings no they don't business meetings but they don't go to where there's just people sharing right. and it's really freaking helpful about, about seemingly personal things yeah yeah it's that, very helpful that once shared or recognized is not personal at all exactly that's the beauty of it that's the beauty of life it life becomes the impersonal including all the problems yeah you know you said something you said something that uh, spurred a, an insight that um, I haven't had you know I mean it, it, this, and it was just a throwaway, kind of throwaway thing you said in between a bunch of other stuff about the, where, where that presence is always there. And that even for the people that don't recognize it at all, it's most of the daily experience. And yeah. you know, I, don't, I haven't had obsessive thinking for years even when I have a problem. The thoughts are kind of dreamlike, and they're not even these days all that often. So there's a lot of just sense of you know, being there. And then a thought arises... And I'm sometimes taken over by it, but the, but it's it's become much more clear the diff you know that that that's only a certain small part of the day, yeah. Which which becomes experientially the whole day, but yeah. it's actually in reality for everybody, even who has never heard this before, it can't be more than a few instants here, a few instants there, and it just takes over everything. Exactly. But the reality is, you know, because well, it puts it in most time, of the time you're not thinking. It puts it into time. Yeah. And time disguises timelessness, so you forget what's ever present. Yeah, because now you're built on coming and going. You only see something that wasn't there. You never see what's always there. You're not recognizing. Yeah, he's, good. he's really, he's like, he's like, he's like there, oh, boom, exactly. boom. I mean, you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no. You don't recognize what's always here. Right. You can. You're built to perceive what's not here, and then it's here, and then it goes. So what's always here gets unrecognized. Yeah. And that's the dilemma. We're like the fish <laughs> in the water that doesn't know it's in water. The other day I had a, uh, not a pleasant experience, but look, you know, almost almost humorous to me. I'm driving to New Haven, uh, to Hartford, actually, to appear before a regulatory commission because they were making accusations about my company. So it was, yeah. in theory, it was stressful, but yeah. I was having a good morning. Yeah. I mean, I really was. I was listening. Actually, I was listening to a song, and tears are streaming down my... For some reason, I'm in a reverie driving to this trial. Yeah. You know? And then a thought, a thought came up, and it was a negative thought. And it's like no energy went into the thought, into the thought, but the mood shifted. Yeah. You know. And then about ten minutes later, another thought came up. Once again, it didn't get continued, but the mood shifted down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty soon, pretty soon, I'm still sort of enjoying it because I'm I'm not really mentating about things, but the mood is slow. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. I don't even know what to make of that. But you me. see, there's mental states, emotional states, physical states, but there's always the seeing. Yeah. yeah. Now the seeing, if it if it's in relationship to one state, what gets lost is the aspect of seeing. Now it's looking from the mental state. Yeah. Right, it seems. See, let's say a thought captures your attention and interest. Right. Now you forget that you're at square zero, and now you're starting at square. Three, which is a mental state. Right. So now you think you've lost it, as if you lost that, but it only appears to be so. 
square zero every time, and then when the, the, the thought loses its dominion over you, what does what do you realize? You're at square zero. Yeah. So you think you're at square fifty four, and then it breaks, and you're at square zero. Yeah. Square four breaks, you're square zero. Square eighty three breaks, you're square zero. After a while, you realize there's only square zero. <laughs> These are all just appearing as states, emotional, mental, physical states, and then the mind gets involved in them and forgets its nature and takes on the nature of that square. But it can't only last in time. It can't override timelessness, infinity, right? So something that seems to be so can only last in time. It can't be infinite. Yeah. It can only seem to be so for a while. That's at the beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, exactly. It can only seem to be so for a while. What meets it or greets it at the beginning, before the beginning end, is this, is the context. After you get some samples of it, your mind can shift into under context. So, you see, so like with verb, what selfing, selfing's an activity, you know, mental process. And then what happens is it hooks the mind, and so now the mind calls me up and says, "I've been selfing all day, Paul." So the verbing of selfing, now the noun pops up. Now you're the one who's doing it, or someone calls me up. Oh, the selfing's driving me crazy. That's also the product of selfing. This, this is just the selfing. The product is that there's a pop-up that you believe you're doing or being done to by it. Yeah. So what happens is you see through that. So now the, the pseudo now just falls right back to what it always was. So there's a verb, and then maybe another one pops up, but they're not dropped. This selfing's finite. It can't go on forever. Yeah. And what where when it stops is is the pause or the infinite moment of the timeless moment. Yeah? So now, while this process is going on and some of your intention is on that process, you can still have a sense of the context holding the finite meaning going on. Yeah? yeah. It doesn't exclude either. Right. You, this context is included. How's your back, bro? Have you it's decided right, yet? Oh, good. No, I haven't decided anything. I'll see you next time you come back. You're not coming Friday? No, I'm going to be my day fairy princess. Oh, you are? Great. <laughs> She's a natural. That's a better move, bro. She's a natural. Yeah, I'll see you when I come back. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> All right. See you, man. You'll be back here. Yeah, right? yeah, I'll be back. Paul, I don't want to keep you up. I don't know. I'm Bye. like waiting for the guy who's going to take me up. I'm going to yeah. stay at his house today. I got to drive. It's good to talk to you. Oh, it's I great to see both of so you. Nice glad. to meet you. Yeah, you. So glad that I, I came. I totally resonate with you. I totally get what you're saying. Oh, good, good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. fun, eh? Yeah. Okay. It's a nice, nice group. Because these, this usually was a you run into a bunch of alcoholics. They, they brought out, they through. brought out a great talk. I know. They, they brought no, out no, they have Diane here. They're yeah. just like the people in Staten Island. Like what happened in Staten Island? A lot of them, in a way, got overrun by the, the conditioning. You know, I don't even go there anymore. Oh, some really? of them are coming here Friday. Yeah, they just, you know, there's that. There was that. That recognition, but it didn't get enough oxygen for the flame to really catch. It's too suffocating over there, in a way, conditionally. And I've seen it happen. So many of them went into bad places again. So. You ready to roll, Will? Yeah, whenever you are. I like that shirt. But. Yeah, I, I don't know where I get my shirts. Who gives them to me? Really, what they mean? But I kind of just like like shirts. So that first. Yeah, I don't know. It's a firecracker thing. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Supercharged firecracker. By the way, having a little knowledge of marketing, I have to share one. Yeah. You need to be wearing your product. I wore it the other day. You need to be wearing your I like this product. One. I, I mean, you're right. holding up these shirts, such a great shirt, but you're not wearing it yourself. Yeah, that's the point. You got a point. I had to wear my own seeing eye today. You know, you got to see. By the this time is the talk is over, see what you, you know. Know. I'll tell you the subliminal message. <laughs> by the time you're done with your talk, everyone wants to be you. So <laughs> you got the shirt on, you see. They are. That's the sales. They are. Yeah, right. I get that. But uh, I'm saying. You it's know, like you this guy I hang out with at home. Joke with him. He always sits like this. He's like pointing a gun at you when he's talking. I said, "What's that fucking thing? Is this a little defense?" Uh, I don't really know. I don't know if I like what you're saying. <laughs> I said, "Put that hose down." <laughs> Jesus Christ! Talk about you know body language. Yes. How are you, Sam? Good day. Yeah. These are friends of mine. Kerry, I forget your name. Evangela. Evangela. Thank you so much. Oh, thank so you. So nice to meet you. These are friends of, from Connecticut. Hi, nice so. to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Well, we'll come up to Boston. I don't know. I got to ask Mr. Mike. Whatever. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but like just like with the school thing, he was blowing up school, and he didn't go like when school opened. He was. It took him a week to finally get there the first time. Hey, let me ask you a plumbing question while I have you here. Somebody installed the toilet in my house, mm-hmm. and now it smells terrible. The wax seal is leaking. Yes. But there's seal. nothing you know, leaking. No, because it's leaking down, but it's leaking air is coming out from under the toilet. So you pull, you pull the toilet, put a new wax seal, and put it down. Mother fucking, are you sure? That's all you got here? No. Oh, it's normal. It's going to happen all the time. Because it was leaking. The toilet was leaking, yeah. so they pulled it out. Well, the problem is the plane and the pipe that sits on the floor. Right. Yeah. And if that's loose... The wax seal is going to leak, and if that, that light, usually that's loose because the floor around it is rotted. So you got to. It's, it's a big job. Sort of you made it sound. Dude, you just made it sound so simple. It's like, oh, well, wax seal. Well, wait, no. though, right? If if they get a certain Sun kind of wax seal, it be a temporary repair. Oh, no. and I tried. It. I got one in my house. It's like a, it's not wax. It's like rubbery, and it doesn't look like because my floor moves. So it's like going to put the food yeah. in the thing and take it upstairs. Upstairs doesn't smell. It's downstairs. It's below the other one. The ceiling is all open next to the That's where it smells. In the downstairs. Yeah, it's like you can't see it. Right. You're like, what the fuck? Why do you smell it? And it's not really good. It's almost like a scale. It's almost like a scale. We're like shit. Shit. Um, it at Let me say goodnight to him. I've heard about you. Friday night. We'll take care of We don't have to understand it, but maybe we will. Maybe we'll walk into this. Dude, it's just going to cost everybody so much money. You know what I Dude, it's, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. For little, you have never been to my job. Right? Yeah, right. It used to be cost the same. It's called Cinders. Oh, Cinders. That's your It's at the bar now. Black River Bar now. But, um, it's just funny. I mean, they have burgers and shit. Well, who wants to go to the place where they can get a burger? You want to go get a burger? Oh, they feed the kitchen guys. The kitchen guys were back there eating fucking Kobe beef fucking ribeyes that are $65 a pop. I don't know how they fed us. We got it. It was a deal. They choose to go out there. They feed the dishwasher and shit. We're not going to buy all the food for five hours. You know what I mean? We're not there all day. They fed everybody. They should, but there's... I'm not hanging with so, and it wasn't like you could eat anything. You had to like chicken yeah. bar. Right, they would make it for everybody, right? Like family style kind of meal. Like, right. I mean, yeah, we get out early. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you need to grab uh, anything well, here. You just keep losing. Your recording device. Yeah, I got it. Oh, okay, you got your. Go home. You're really recording. I was like.